Oi, hello, Jessica. <laughs> it's me, Matt Thiessen. I've come here from the past back to the future. I'm British Thiessen. Wow, British Thiessen. It is such an honor to get you on the podcast. This is a big deal. I heard that Jimmy Eat Pod had their lead singer of the band they talk about on. So yep. I was like, so I got in the time machine and I said, I'm going forward to the future. And I'm going to be here on the podcast. I want to see what happened to me band Reliant K in the future. And I find out there's a podcast. I don't know what a podcast is. I'm from 1998. I- I'm. Uh, you. It's funny. You kind of sound a little bit more like you should be on that other uh, married couples pop punk <laughs> podcast because you're giving me Australian vibes, British Teeson. Crikey, I'm no such thing. I'm British Teeson. Vegemite. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sadie Hawkins Pod. Good day. (laughs) Straight from the streets of Sussex, I am. (laughs) Fresh in your drink, governor. (laughs) So, hello. Yeah, so two congratulations to different podcasts. Congratulations to Jimmy Eat Pod. They had Jim Atkins on. Right. I think we might have done this last week or the week before. Maybe we did. I'm not sure. But then congratulations to Sam and Emma from Punko's Pod because they were finally married. If you heard our crossover episodes with them, uh, we did Be My Escape. Nope. Nope. We did Who I Am, Hates Who I've Been. Yep. (laughs) And we did Manic Monday with them. That's right. You know, they were supposed to be married years ago, but it was all delayed because of the pandemic. So they finally got to get married and that's wonderful. And they have barely stuff. podcasted all year. I say, what's a marriage if it stops you from podcasting? <laughs> well, and that's well biblical. Said. <laughs> so we're back. We're back. We're talking about the demo. We're talking about it's we're back. We're see, we're back to work. Because it's all work and no play around here. That's right. And hey, I got a I got another job. Fitting. Fitting that we're doing Danny all work and no Danny is also play. back to all work and no play. Yep. So, you know, more about that in the future. Once I feel settled in. I don't wanna <laughs> I just want I don't wanna take anything for granted. I just well, wanna congrats, Dan. do my best. Not keep my head down. I just wanna do my best, have a chance to shine, try to be appreciated at my new employer. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. So yeah. Well, I appreciate you, Dan. Thank you. Here at Sadie Hawkins Pod LLC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this week we are talking. I don't think we have any voicemails. Do you have any other top of the show business? I mean, it's such a busy week for me right now with everything that. Oh, look at you. It's so hard for me. I found a job really easily. And so I'm having it such difficult. I found a job quickly, but it wasn't easy. <laughs> I, I, I hit the pavement digitally, so to speak. It was a real stressful week looking for a job digitally when you're really doing it it's a full-time job like you think like oh i had two weeks off and then i started up a job right away oh did you enjoy your two weeks no and it's not like i'm waiting it's not like i'm panicked because we were okay on savings for i like i was buckled down we were like we're gonna we're gonna buckle down if it takes two months to find a job we're all buckled down we're gonna save up our we got money saved up we're gonna do a good job we're gonna be good frugal kids Yep. And then I found a job right away. And then I looked back on those last two weeks. So like, I went that on was... a shopping spree. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I didn't go on a shopping spree. <laughs> the Lord was looking out for us. The yes, Lord works you. in mysterious ways. Yes. Thank you. Anyone who is praying or sending good vibes our way. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. When one prays, that's great. But when lots of people in a podcast community come together and pray, the Lord hears them even more. So I appreciate that. I'm using my hands like I'm bringing he the energy to me. He is doing very large hand <laughs> gestures. So we're talking about, and Jessica called it last week. She's like, let's do one of those demo songs that uh, 
that we don't we haven't really done much of so i'm looking at the list of songs on i'll work and no play since it's been a while since we talked about it so we've done k car did we do chud or whatever it is <laughs> yeah but that's a song so then let's go through it let's kind of reset okay where we are with all work and no play so you know what i don't think we've ever read the wikipedia for all work and no play which does exist maybe we have but here well let's do it again all Work and No Play is the demo CD released by Christian rock band Reliant K in 1998. It caught the attention of DC Talk's Toby McKean. I we don't know why. I didn't know Toby Mac's real name was Toby McKean, who subsequently signed them to Goatee Records. Yeah, we don't. It's still... He was like, ooh, I love this this new British sound that they're bringing me from Ohio. Let's go with it. I mean, I guess it was just because they worked with Mark Lee Townsend, right? Like, just Mark Lee Townsend produced this demo. Yeah. And so, because Mark Lee Townsend... I forget, I forget that Mark no, Lee Townsend saw an was interview in DC Talk. Or we either saw an interview or read something where Toby Mac was like, hey, you got anything for me? And he was like, yeah, I got... He was like, well, yes and no. And he's like, oh, I just did this thing for, like, my daughter's friends. Right. And he's like, oh, well, let me listen to that. And he's like, nah, I don't really know if you want to listen to that. And he's like, no, let me listen to it. And that's how Reliant K got signed. And the first song... Right, we talked about it with K Carr, for sure. Because the first track on this album is K Car, the original demo version, which becomes the closing track of the self titled. So some of some, some something about K Car just caught Toby Mac's attention right off the bat. But <laughs> you can go back and listen to our K Car episode to hear about that. So seven of the eleven tracks on this album, says Wikipedia, were eventually remade on either the band's first or second full length albums. Kojak, Register B. Rad and William were never remade for another album, unlike all the others, and are only available on this album. I feel like that's a circuitous sentence. Like, were never made for another album, and are only available on this album. I feel like you could edit that down. It's the same thing. But now we have. I mean, we're pretty close to done. So we haven't. So we've done K Car. We've done I'm Lion O. We have not done Staples. We've done Marilyn Manson, Ain't My Girlfriend. We have done Kojak, which is a song only on this album. We've done My Good Friend Charles. We have not done Register. We've done Be Rad. And then Curb was rewritten as For moments, for the Moments I Feel Curb, Faint. Curb, that was Curb. It. Now we're doing William, and we've done Softer to Me. So all we have left is the song Register and Staples. And that's it. And we'll be done with the demo. Well, ka chunk, ka chunk, ka chunk. Oh, and curb. <laughs> so sorry. We have Staples Curb, which is what well, which we'll talk about when we do the song for moments I feel faint, and register. <laughs> but this week we're talking about William. Yeah, it's so funny that this album is just like K Car right off the bat, and uh, Toby Max like sign him, sign him. <laughs> Can we get them across the pond? Can we bring them across the pond? Yeah. <laughs> because yeah Tyson does his british yep. accent yep so this song to me is like basically be rad but it's like not as it's fun it's okay it's a good song it's like a good pop punk like juvenile f- fat wreck inspired skate punk song right and, but at least be rad like kind of references skateboard kids and like it has the word rad in it <laughs> Like, this song, to me, solidifies a theme that we've talked about throughout the history, that we kind of developed as we started doing this podcast, and it's this demo that really made me realize it, is that, like, I think when Relying Case started, and I'm sorry if this doesn't give them a lot of credit and if it's not necessarily true, but when you listen to the demo, I really think that this kind of shines a light on it. I think Relying K comes from being, like, maybe the second or third generation of Christian punk bands. I mean, you can, I don't know, you can debate which generation, but they're definitely like the second or third, like they're down the line a little bit. And they're like the first generation, they're coming from the first generation of Christian punk kids who are like, let us be a Christian punk band. Because like the early generations of Christian punk bands were like, let's be Christians and let's, the first generation was like, 
we are Christians, let us start a punk band so we can be Christians in the punk scene. And then the second generation of Christian punks were like, we are Christians, but we also like punk, so let's just do a punk band. This is like the tooth and nail groups. Like, let's do a punk band, but we happen to be Christian, and we'll sing about our Christianity when we're comfortable with it. And maybe some of us will be ministries and some of our bands will not be ministries. But then Reliant K is like this third generation of punk bands who have heard all the previous Christian punk bands and what they do and what they don't do for like ministering or not ministering. But they're kind of like that generation of that. There's this thing about TV writers, how the first generation of TV writers were writing from all these other forms of art and understanding and literature and doing things on television. But then eventually, like 30 years, 40 years into television, you have a whole generation of TV writers who have only grown up watching TV. So everything is distilled into like TV is now written from the point of view of TV has been around for a whole generation. So basically, Reliant K is the first Christian punk band or one of the first, no, not the first one, but they're an example of one of the ones that got the biggest where they're like, let's be a Christian punk band and do all the things Christian punk bands do. And this song is a prime example of that because it's just like hammering home, like let's write a song about God's will and but let's do it in a fun skatey way so we can go play those YMCA punk shows and we can play those church basements and the kids will be pogoing and slam dancing and skateboarding and then maybe at the end they'll think hmm, Christ is cool. Like, I think, so that's kind of what they came up with. When you hear Thiessen's British voice, it just sells to me <laughs> that they might be really, that Hoops and Thiessen might be really talented songwriters already by, like, 1998 when they're still teenagers. But they're clearly trying to cop a style, emulate a style, be something that they see other bands being and not yet found their own voice. And not yet found their own style. They're just doing things that other bands have done before. Which yes. everyone kind of does. But it's so <laughs> much more blatant when you hear Teeson's like fake. Yeah. You know? Everything about this song is just very <laughs> much a demo song. I think of all the demo songs we've gone over so far, this one is the least tight. Just all around. Songwriting. Right. Uh, I mean, I guess there's other ones. But songwriting... Uh, the way they play their instruments like the drums literally sound like banging on trash cans and not in the savannah way (laughs) and then there's just that like heavy i just learned how to play guitar reverb all over this right that i'm like ooh, we all just picked up instruments for the first time and said hey let's start a garage band but it does sound like effective like low level fat wreck epitaph skate punk like it does sound like like, they know how to make the skate punk sound. You know what I mean? The 90s sure. skate punk sound. Whereas um, uh, so many other bands, it's like, they pick up a guitar, they want to be Green Day, but they have no idea. Because you got Pedal Hoops in Reliant K. I'm sure Pedal Hoops was already real well into pedals and knew how to get, like, that fat, you know, skate punk sound out of the I think distortion. got pedals a little later. Well, I think we've read interviews before, but then maybe it was Mark maybe. Lee Townsend. Maybe it was like like drive this up, and it'll sound more like Mil- Millen Collin or something. They did something to know because like I knew lots of like I didn't know them personally, but I heard lots of bands at like local shows. Where it's like they want to be Green Day, they want to be Blink One Eighty Two, but they have and don't you know a no judgment because I have no idea how to like process you know get your tone out of guitar live to actually sound like green day or blink 182 but like so not like correctly processed that you don't really sound like anything you just sound like you picked up a guitar plugged it in and however it plugged in and then just tried to play fast at least this has that somewhat like driving crunchy attempt at skate punk sure but it as a song it's just like yeah it's like the least you know, it's funny because like B Rad, I guess when we talked about B Rad, we just like we're so into it at that moment, <laughs> and it reminded us of the Angus soundtrack and the Mallrat soundtrack and all that kind of stuff. But like, I already heard this song with B Rad, and B Rad's lyrics were harder to like suss out exactly what was going on. These lyrics are right. clearly obvious, yeah. but something about the fact that this just sounds like B-Rad but, and the lyrics are like too in your face and too obvious kind of are a detriment compared to B-Rad. Do you want to read through the lyrics real quick? Let's do it. 
my life's been torn apart, stripped down and going nowhere. I don't know where to start and where to go from there. I don't know where to start. Open up a bag of candy hearts. I can't accept, I can't say that I actually thought that up myself. So I'll cover it later, but someone on a YouTube oh, comment gotcha. came up with that. It gets tough to follow your will. I get scared that I might take a spill, the apple juice mm. in the hall. Please tell mom it was not her fault. Uh, me and Faith, we argue a lot. If I will, will it be your will? If I will, will it be your will or will it not? Right. Well, that's Helpful. that is. I mean, we're th- trying to get into wordplay, well, and it's not quite working just yet. Sort of. Yes, I agree. Um, I'll say that that moment on paper, those lyrics on paper, well, on your phone, <laughs> those lyrics written down, don't look good recited. But at least like rhythm, the rhythm of it, that yeah, moment it, in the it song flows. plays. It almost it doesn't matter what he's saying because right. he is just getting the lyrics out at this point and just kind of driving the song forward for what it is. God, I need you. Here, I need you. Now to help me through. I think that God, it's I clear you, you it. know <laughs> just how to do what you're going to do. Right. I'm feeling quite content. I will reign in your testament. Sure of mm. what I seem blind of. My guidance is your everlasting love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, you know, it's just a nice little song. Yeah, just little, a nice little, little song. Like, just yeah, a little. Here we go. We can and play you know, this at uh, at church when they have like a, a talent show or something. Sure. Yeah, and you know what? There is DNA. There's real DNA of Reliant K in the lyrics. I just realized, like as juvenile and kind of half baked as these lyrics are as sort of a worship skate punk song. It's mentioned so much by other people than us talking about Reliant K and Matt Thiessen's lyrics, how his lyrics often take the form of prayers. And this literally sounds like a prayer. Yeah, for sure. Like, obviously, Matt Thiessen developed and matured as a lyricist. But, you know, this just sounds like a normal prayer. Like, his his prayer-like lyrics later are like works of art. This is just like a regular normal prayer. Like it's almost like one that you'd kind of just recite in church all together. Like real simple, just so everyone knows what you're all recent. One of those call and response type prayers. Right. William, will I am. I am your will. Right. And that's the other wordplay that's attempted. Is the song's called William. And to be quite honest, I don't you know, it's been a while since I could say this where, like, I haven't listened to this song in, like, 20 years. Because there was a point when we, we, like, ever since we started talking about Reliant K every week, at this point, there's not a lot of songs that when we're going to talk about them, I haven't listened to them a couple right. of times in the last few years. Even if we have no immediate plans to do certain songs, I've heard every song in the repertoire consistently over the last couple of years. But I haven't gone back and deliberately visited the demo or any of the songs on here. So yeah, it's okay. William, I, I listened to the song for the first time. Like, <laughs> uh, let's see, when did we start recording? Around eighteen minutes ago. Yeah, so about twenty minutes ago was the first time I stopped and listened to this. Hey, at song. least I listened to it a couple of ti- a couple days, a couple of days ago, and a couple times a day. Um, I mean, I think I listened through all the way through the demo, like when we first started the podcast or something. But right. yeah. <laughs> I was like, look, I, I can get it. I can I can suss it out from uh, from that much. And I also just want to compliment Todd Frescone's drumming on this track. Because I don't think I really paid attention to the, to the, like, how good the drumming is on it. You know, how fun it is. Maybe not good. It's just like, it's doing exactly what it needs to do. And then there's a fill in here. I can't quite remember. I didn't write down the time. So let's listen. There we go. There it is. It just sounds cool to me. It just sounds cool. It just sounds like the best local band. And they were the best local band. And then Chris, who used to come to all the local shows, got pissed when they signed to Goatee Records. As long as I'm on the YouTube, let me com- let me read off these comments. Portsmouth Street Preachers two years ago said, 
I don't know where to start. Open up a bag of candy hearts, like I mentioned. And then Mitch Caps replied, great note. <laughs> like, you know, great note. And then David Charles said, this song sounds like Calm Before the Storm by Fallout Boy, but better. So we got to listen oh, yeah. to Calm Before the Storm by Fallout Boy, because I do not know Fallout Boy, but but for the hits. So let's hear Calm Before the Storm. Set outside my front window. This story's going somewhere. He's well hung and I am hanging. I forget that Fall Fall Out Boy was really like a punk band. Yeah, man, this like takes me back. <laughs> Cause I just never listened to Fall Out Boy. I I'm guess. sorry. They I said I, they said which song was better? This song, definitely. No, they said the. They said. I, I know what they said. I mean, just listening to a couple seconds of this song for the first time, I don't hear melodically where they are related. Maybe I could like. There's plenty of times where I've listened to certain things enough that I'm like, oh, there's definitely like. A tiny moment in there that sounds like something. I just feel like poo-pooing this note. I feel like poo-pooing this <laughs> this comparison. I'm like, is this just the crunchiest punk right, song you maybe, know? Maybe, maybe. Because you really only listen to <laughs> pop music, and then like you listened to Uma Thurman, and that's your favorite song, and then that's Fall Out Boy, right? Yeah, that's Fall Out Boy. That's the worst. That's the stupidest song. <laughs> that Uma Thurman song where they use the Munsters. They use the Munsters song. I don't know. I only I'm only familiar yeah, with a is. few Fall Out Boy songs because back back in the day uh, when you'd burn MP3s onto your blank CDs, my cousin from Chicago was like, "Hey, check out this local band," and like burned a few Fall Out Boy songs onto a CD for me with some other stuff, and right. so that was when I was first kind of introduced to Fall Out Boy. Okay, you know Fall Out Boy is like collapsible lung was like worked, isn't it? Kind of like the, the fact that they went on to be a pop band, like a flat out pop band from that sound, from the right, sound sure, of yeah, co- yeah. this song, Calm Before the Storm. Right. I just don't know enough about Fall Out Boy. I've never paid attention to them, but they mm-hmm. went on to be a full blown pop band from this sound originally. So interesting. Yeah. I don't think I've listened to anything after Sugar We're Going Down. <laughs> So I, what we're saying is we're going to become a Fallout Boy podcast after this. 100%. Right? Absolutely. Sorry, I think Emma loves Fallout Boy from Punk Goes Pod. Pretty sure she does. And I just, yeah, I just, sorry. If she's hearing this after we complimented their wedding, I just never, <laughs> there's a, a lot of, you know what? Same thing with like My Chemical Romance. Like, And it's funny that Relying K is kind of like the biggest band in that same way from the Christian scene, but I did yeah, get they're into... way bigger than than uh, MCR. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, there's a case to be made that like Reliant K from the Christian scene is the equivalent of like MCR or Fall Out Boy's trajectory on a different scale in a different sure, scene yeah. in a different way. Like there's a case to be made that there's an analog there between those trajectories within their related scenes. But what I'm just saying is, like, all the biggest punk bands of the 2000s or the biggest rock bands that had, like, punk leanings, like, I just wasn't into them. I just didn't really pay attention or care. I kind of just found what I found, and I don't know. I remember for the longest time, and I was totally wrong, I thought Anti-Flag was, like, one of those type of bands because they were constantly being sold in Hot Topic. And I always thought of, like, Fall Out Boy and My Chemical Romance as, like... The big mall punk bands that were slightly more dark and alty than, say, like, sure. say, like, <laughs> Avril Lavigne or something that was clearly more mall influenced. Uh-huh. But I thought Anti Flag was like a mall punk band. And I guess in some cases, some, some ways you could say they are, but they're actually like a political band. Like, I didn't know that. I'm just laying everything on the table because we don't have this is a very short discussion about the song Will I Am. William, <laughs> let's talk about let's talk about Will I Am. Uh, oh, okay. So from the Black Eyed Peas, exactly. Then we can talk about the Black Eyed Peas. What's so, your favorite Black Eyed Peas song, Diana? <laughs> My humps. That uh, one that sounds like. Uh, 
I can't think of any. The one that uses banned words. Oh, right, 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 right. But it's like, let's get it started in here is what they say, right? Is that what you're talking about? Well, that would be one version of the song. Yeah, that's like the the radio friendly version. Yeah. I can't remember. I don't, I can't even remember any Black Eyed Peas songs. I'm looking at what's their hits. I don't have Spotify, so it doesn't really tell me. <laughs> well, anyway, Will I Am also Pump known. Pump it? That one that's like beachy? Uh, pump it and my humps were oh, really yeah, big when I was in like high school and, and like I remember driving with my friends to the beach like blasting those songs. You know what's funny? Yeah. Okay, hold on. I can tie this back to Fallout Boy. <laughs> so the song Pump It uses the song from Pulp Fiction in the sample. Yeah. Right? So I don't know this for a fact, but the song Uma Thurman is like she's gonna dance like Uma Thurman, right? Because they're referring to they're gonna they're referring to Pulp Fiction, but I think like they wanted to sample the Pulp Fiction song, but probably couldn't, or they like forgot that the Black Eyed Peas had already done that. So they go and they get the Munsters theme song because they're like, "Oh, I've never heard this. You've never heard this song? No. Oh well, this came out after uh, after uh, this came out while we've been living in Los Angeles. Yeah, I definitely don't know this one." They, they use the Munsters theme song. You've never heard this? No. Because I think they wanted to sample the Pulp Fiction song because it's supposed to be about like a girl who's sexy and dancing like Uma Thurman. And then they want to put in some surf rock, some 60s surf rock. Like Uma Thurman tears. doesn't really dance sexy in that movie. I, I, whatever. That doesn't matter. <laughs> There's a girl who's a free spirit gotcha. and the fallout yeah, yeah, and I the fallout it. boy is admiring what a free dancing <laughs> spirit she is. And then they wanted to sample some 60s rock uh, to like play into that Quentin Tarantino right. thing. But I'm so like they use the Munsters. Yeah, they use the Munsters theme song. I'm like, do they en- it just makes me think the girl is dancing like this. <laughs> like a Frankenstein. <laughs> Ah. It makes me think she's a Frankenstein girl. Amazing. Like, it's mindless self-indulgence. Have, is, is there a music video? Is that what she does in the music video? I've never seen if there's a music video. <laughs> but I do remember that this song came out around the time we moved to Los Angeles. So it's just something. Yeah. I, I had not heard that one. <laughs> this episode's... I'm loving how off the rails this episode is. We're just going everywhere. <laughs> Well, while you look that up, I'm going to keep talking about Will I Am, which is the similar. There, there is a a music video for it. Oh, I don't think that what I don't think what we guessed is going to happen. Oh, I don't know. There's like a Zoom call happening, but it's from seven <laughs> years ago, and uh, they're at a golf course. There, I'm kind of skimming through. You know, Zoom was in a lot of trouble seven years ago until Fall Out Boy used them in there. <laughs> Music They're video. playing paintball. Uh, let's see. What else are they doing? Oh, they're, somebody's doing stand-up comedy. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's karaoke. Never mind. Who's the girl in this video? She looks vaguely familiar. Well, I can't see it. You're keeping your phone oh, to yourself. sorry. And now she's in a house. She's oh. got some coffees. And they're texting. they got a bunch of emojis on the screen because emojis. Now they're doing... Oh, I don't know. (laughs) I'm sorry I ever brought it up. (laughs) Uma Thurman is a song by American rock band Fall Out Boy, digitally released on January 12th, 2015, two days after our wedding anniversary. The song prominently features sampled theme music from the Munsters TV show, 1964 to 1966, and the lyrics celebrate actress Uma Thurman. Can you imagine, dude, like, what is Uma Thurman's reaction? Like, oh, Fall Out Boy wrote a song about me? Oh, it has the Munsters theme song in it? Is Rob Zombie going to use this song in his Munsters reboot? Oh my gosh, that's right. I forgot that was a thing that's happening. Oh no. You know what? Do you know what reboot movie was cute? Dark Shadows. <laughs> that, was, that was fun. It was a good time at the box office. <laughs> it was as I wasn't the- familiar with the original property because they didn't play that on TV Land or Nick at Night when I was a kid. But I mean, it's definitely considered, you know, later day bad Tim Burton. But Jessica enjoyed it for what it was. That was actress Sarah Murphy. On uh, in that Uma Thurman music video, and I don't think you 
I mean, I don't know. Do you it's actually a contest rec- winner? Well, it no, says she she's, looks no, like she's somebody. playing the character of oh, contest I see. winner. I am but she looks just this. like Dakota Johnson in some of these maybe, photos. Yeah. So maybe she, you just thought she maybe you just thought she looked like Dakota Johnson. Yeah, she just she looks like Dakota Johnson and a couple other people kind of put together. Oh, she was in the show Nashville. Oh, okay. Well, I guess we're not going to learn about Will I Am because <laughs> that is the pun of the title. To say, Lord, let my let your will let my will be yours, and the will I am, which also was Will I Am's pun for his own name. I guess the question is, if I can eke out one more moment out of this Will I Am connection, was Will I? Yeah, the 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 Black Eyed Peas were a known thing by 1998, right? His career began in oh, 1988. Wow! But I don't know when like the Black Eyed Peas really. Got going. I know the Black Eyed Peas. Where is the love was big in what, like 2002, 2003? The Black Eyed Peas themselves started in 1995. Oh, wait. In 95, they were called the Black Eyed Pods. (laughs) Interesting. They changed their name and then they became the Black Eyed Peas from 2003 to 2015. How interesting. Why? I don't know. Huh. Because, like, Unless, did someone... The Black Eyed Peas, that makes sense. The Black iPods? No, that doesn't make sense for them to be called the Black Eyed Pods. Because there's no pun there. Are they like pod people? Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm confused. Did someone, like, edit that into Wikipedia and it's never been noticed? In 1988, while attending two different high schools, uh, Will I Am and Alan Lindo Jr., uh, met at an all-ages venue in Los Angeles. They formed a hip-hop dance music crew named Tribal Nation. Uh, they took the blah, 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 they took this. They found another guy. They were the Whiskey a Go Go ninety one. I don't think I realized how old the Black Eyed Peas were. Hmm. There's no reference to them. Oh, here we go. In nineteen ninety five, Will I Am and App D- and Apple to App formed a new group called the Black Eyed Pods with two other people and featured select their number of tracks. When did Fergie they come later along? changed their names from pods to peas. Unlike the gangsta rap sounds of Los Angeles based hip hop at the time, the trio perform the trio performed I'll answer your question in a second. And adopted a conscious musical so I just don't know anything about the black eyed peas, just like I don't know anything about Fall Out Boy. <laughs> no, uh, no, I do. I guess I technically know a little bit more about the black eyed peas than I know about Fall Out Boy. Because I know that Fergie joined a little later. I know that like from what I've heard, the black eyed peas were kinda like a slightly more socially conscious rap group gotcha for a while until fergie joined and they went (laughs) full-on pop and then fergie left there's a nick kroll show sketch about that which because so let me show you this sketch where it's like a really high energy um how come every time you come around my (laughs) london london bridge want to go down so here's a nick kroll show (laughs) sketch (laughs) called beets and rice what is it with like female singers that were part of like a group from the 90s and 2000s that then decided you know what i'm gonna go out on my own in the mid to late 2000s and create these songs that put out weird spelling and misinformation and things like that into the world and why so many (laughs) different metaphors i mean there's always been metaphors so many different things represent butts like milkshakes (laughs) and one of I just realized one of our friends. Danny, that's pod- not what the milkshake song is about. Oh, it's not. I what? don't believe it is. I always assumed it was about the obvious. P- oh, Daniel Jones and Larry, what the fuck? Oh, boobs. Is it about boobs? Well, I I remember now that one of our podcast friends talked about this Nick Kroll episode one time, but here it is. It's called Beets and Rice. Sam, I am. This your boy, Scuba. I'm living live. And we about to drop some serious rhymes on your mind. This is the revolution. Put down the institution. So it's Nick Kroll being a socially conscious rapper. And it's a really high energy, quickly edited sketch. Like, they must have really. What's up? I'm Jason, man. I've been checking you guys out. And then Tim Heidecker comes up and he wants to be their new manager. Take a look at this. 
Okay. Go ahead. You're not going to change the message, all right? I'm not going to change the message. Are you kidding me? The message is the key. Hey, listen, sweetheart, come here. I want to introduce you to somebody. This is Lady DIY, the newest singer in the group. Okay, once you guys get to know each other, everybody, we're going to have a lot of fun. Everybody get up there. Okay. So this is what they're saying Fergie did to the Black Eyed Peas. <laughs> Switch up your cellular plan. Tyranny a contract, different plans keep me down. Lose the service, man. I look like a clown. It's time we all come together. <laughs> really, the plan we ever had. I love that they put the, they, they turn half the image of the episode into like the legalese on the left side and the offer, like all phone commercials do. Amazing. And it goes on more and more, but so that's as much as I know about the Black Eyed Peas. I know that they were like an actual rap group. Until Fergie joined, and it was Fergie being in the band that made uh, James Spader's character from The Office say everything basically he said about them. Remember that episode of The Office? No. Do you remember when, like, James... You know that I kind of... You know, I do rewatch The Office frequently, but I always tap out sort of slightly after, like, Jim and Pam's wedding, you know? Like, once once Michael Scott goes, you know, gets a little rough. Because they want to make everybody Michael Scott, and it just doesn't work. You know, they don't know who to give his material to, so... Right. Yeah, that was my main... I mean, we talked about it in our office episode, but that was, like, my main um, problem with when he left, is that, like, all of the leftover... You said this, but all the leftover... What's his name? (laughs) Steve Carell. Steve Carell jokes just went out to everyone. Well, I just went on a 25-minute deep dive on YouTube. It's like five minutes. We paused because I was typing in everything I could to try to find this clip of Robert California from The Office where he walks in and he's like, I just got back from a party. What's the deal with the Black Eyed Peas? They're rap for people who don't like rap. They're rock for people who don't like rock. They're pop for people who don't like pop. And then you cut to BJ Novak and he's like, he's nodding and he's like, yeah, this guy knows what he's talking about. But I couldn't find the clip. There's there's like a whole compilation. There's like a whole 10 minute Robert California best of clip. I'm not watching that. I'm not going to go through that trying to find it. Oh, well. So that was who knows if that person even thinks that's one of his best of moments. Right. Although really, 10 minutes. Wow. How did they squeeze that out? (laughs) Anyways, with that, we'll go to break. Well, I feel like our break. So (laughs) William by Reliant K. (laughs) Good song. I mean, we're going to wrap. Well, I was going to say, we still have deep dive. <laughs> we do? Oh, we do? Y- yeah. We I have thought song we, meanings. I thought we deep dive on the Black Eyed Peas and Fall Out Boy. I thought that's how the episode ends. But okay, we'll go to break and we'll be back, I guess. Y- yeah. All right. We just want to take a moment to thank you for listening to Sadie Hawkins Pod. Whether you've been listening for a while or this is your first time, we want to hear your thoughts on this episode, your corrections, and your Reliant K memories at our voicemail line, which is 402 95 Sadie. And if talking on the phone isn't your thing, because I know it's not mine, and whose is it really, you can send us an email to sadiehawkinspod at gmail.com or visit our socials at Instagram and Twitter, which are both at Sadie Hawkins Pod. While there, you can also see the visuals we discuss on the podcast each week. You can also visit sadiehawkinspod.com for easy access to all these links, as well as to our merch store for shirts, mugs, stickers, and more. We also want to thank our patrons at patreon.com slash sadiehawkinspod, who include Isaac, James, Kendall, Josh A., Timothy, Daniel, Jay, Eric, Joel, Connor, Michael, Samantha, Jimmy Eat Pod, This Might Be a Podcast, Tucker and Brady. Join our Patreon now for two monthly bonus episodes, our entire backlog of bonus episodes, which include reviews of the case for karaoke songs and chapters of the complex infrastructure known as the Female Mind Book. You'll also get stickers, guitar picks, and a special Patreon exclusive shirt when you've donated a lifetime contribution of $60. Ooh, that sounds like fun. Where can I sign up again? At patreon.com slash Sadie Hawkins pod. If you want to be a patron of the arts, the fine arts, the podcast arts, there's one place to go. Sadie Hawkins pod.com slash. Oh, wait, no, no, that's not it. I'm sorry. I'm Just sorry. I panicked. We have song meanings. What? Oh, I guess. Yeah. And of course we have Josh below with or blue below. I do this every time. 
where he has his oh, Every the Light way, K song ranked. By the way, do I think this song's about God? <laughs> Meh, maybe. You stop. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> they have, at, at the time of this, which was updated July 2nd, 2020, Reliant K had 193 songs. So William comes in at number 186. Okay. And that is in a large chunk of all all work, no play only song. So at 190, is they have B-Rad. At 189, they have Kojak. At 188, they have Curb. At 187, they have Register. And at 186, they have William. So one of their, uh, one of their more liked songs off the demo. So over on Song Meanings, I love that it's just written out like, like a, you know how they have the, the lyrics on Song Meanings? Well, they have it just kind of in a large chunk, just a paragraph. Here's just a paragraph <laughs> of the lyrics, not formatted at all. <laughs> like it's uh, like it's some sort of beat poetry, like you just read exactly. it. Exactly. Music Equals Life on March 9th, 2003 said, first off, I'm not Christian, but I still listen to Reliant K because they have good music and a lot of lyrics I like too. Don't know what I'll get for that, but anyways, I'm surprised no one's posted on this song. It's one of their older ones, but it's still one of my faves. Very catchy and well played. I thought they were just, I thought because you paused when you said, I like them because they have a lot of lyrics. And I was like, oh, okay. And then you said that I like, and I'm like, oh, okay. Dying in New Brunswick on March 22nd, 2003 said, hey, no one should give you crap for that. And if they do, they can answer to me. Winky smiley face. Besides, that's one of the main points of bands like Reliant K for their music to reach the world. I mean, Blindside plays in bars and clubs because they tour for the single purpose uh, to reach everybody. Oh, and I like the song really well. Their old stuff was different than the new stuff. I like both, though. Uh, then Lead to Burned Hope on <laughs> April 2nd, 2006 says, Hey, same as me, music equals life. I'm not Christian, but can still relate to most of their songs, not to mention love them in all caps. I love how so many people that aren't Christian have specifically come to the <laughs> William <Yes>. page <laughs> for Reliant K. Uh, next is my name on August 3rd, 2011 said, if I stop and follow your will is actually, it gets tough to follow your will. Oh, they're just correcting the lyrics uh, as written. So that's, uh, those are all the song meanings we have this week. Nice. Well, <laughs> I just leaned over to look at the time because it's going to be a short episode if I don't come up with something. When you type in Relying K. William, the main thing, you get two uploads of the song and then you get a whole lot of performances of Reliant K playing with William Beckett from the Academy is that's right who I'm it, that came up a lot right and uh, I'm pretty they toured sh- with William Beckett also did solo stuff apparently and they toured with him as well around the time that uh John and the Ethans left the band Oh, okay. So he was sorry, off. Ethan and the Johns. <laughs> the Johns. I apologize. <laughs> John and the Ethans. That's my favorite band. <laughs> I didn't even think there was anything wrong with that until you corrected yourself. Instead, of, I'm pretty sure we played because a lot of these performances with William Beckett are of Boomerang, which I'm pretty sure we covered at the time when we did the song Boomerang. So why don't we just we already checked out Fall Out Boy and Black Eyed Peas. Do you want to get a sense for the Academy is since we're looking uh, sure, for other things? Sure. Yeah, I got confused at first because it kept saying Reliant K on tour with with uh, Hello Goodbye and William Beckett. And I'm like, is William Beckett in Hello Goodbye or no? It was just like they were naming all of oh, the okay. people on said tour. So this song. OK, this song I'm saying, oh, OK, to the style. I didn't know what the Academy is really was. The song's called About a Girl. But that's also the name of a Nirvana song. That's the name of the big song from Nirvana's first album, Bleach. Gotcha. Okay, I see how this is, uh... This is definitely some more Hollister punk. (laughs) This goes in line with the, uh... The Jack's Mannequin side of Reliant K... The Reliant K scene. Here's the phrase that pays. 
Do we have any William Beckett or Academy Is fans out there? I didn't give that one a chance. Here's the let's slow things down with the song Slow Down. This is definitely Hollister Punk. Little, not a ska song, but a little ska-ish chord there. I don't have much else. <laughs> How are you doing over there? I was what just looking, looking up? up to see which one of us was right about Milkshake. And Song Facts says a milkshake is a girl's sensual energy. What oh. makes her stand out from the other girls? Taken more literally, it is about a girl who dances seductively and attracts the attention of boys in the club. Her quote-unquote milkshake is the way she shakes her boobs, the source of mother's milk. In parentheses. It's also taken to oh, be... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to go on from here. Oops, oops. Uh, okay, <laughs> you can look that up for yourself if you're interested. Is it what I referenced earlier? No. Oh, okay. Milkshake is a song by American singer Kellis <laughs> from her third <laughs> album, Tasty, 2003, written and produced by the Neptunes. The song was originally offered to Britney Spears for her fourth album, In the Zone. Oh, that'd be so weird. <laughs> but was rejected and given to Keyless or Kellis instead. It was released as the single, lead single from Tasty in the United States on August 25th, 2003 by Star Trek. Could you imagine Britney Spears singing this? I mean, Britney Spears sings some risque songs, but I just mean like the general feel and beat of this song. I can't imagine. Like they'd probably rework it for a Britney Spears sound, but it's just, I can't, it's just weird to imagine. According to Kellis, milkshake in the song is used as a metaphor for quote, something that makes women special, end quote. That's why I think my guess clearly is the correct one. The song is noted for the euphemistic chorus and low beat R&B sound. Milkshake peaked at number three on the U.S. Billboard 100, to Hot 100, in December 2003, becoming Kellis's highest charting single to date. It's Keyless. Keyless. Well... You know, if, if, I'm, if we're learning nothing for the episode of the Reliant K song, <laughs> William, we're learning that I know nothing about pop music. I know nothing about very popular pop music. The music video for Milkshake was directed by Jake Nava. In the video, Keyless enters a diner called Tasty's Yard. She dances suggestively and puts her lips around a cherry, which causes a mother to cover her child's eyes. A cook, played by rapper Nas, not Lil Nas X, but Nas, starts, because Lil Nas X wasn't around in 2003, so to speak, starts delivering milkshakes to the customers while while Keyless dances. A milkshake machine then starts spurting milkshake all over the customers. What if they're lactose intolerant? And more and more people enter the quote-unquote yard. FHM Magazine named the music video (laughs) number 73 (laughs) sexiest music video (laughs) by a female performer of all time. What's the number three sexiest male music video of all time? And would would FHM have done the sexiest male videos? Well, now I need to know. Um, They quoted, as their review of the video said, Here's, here, she's backed up by a posse of dancers wearing tiny diner uniforms. The way she sucks a milkshake and bites a cherry is just unfairly sexy. So, let's talk about FHM Magazine for a second. There was this, I don't know who remembers this, and we do have some younger listeners, so... <laughs> I have no idea what FHM is. Also, they did do a Sexiest Male music video. Oh, they did? Uh, well, 13 times the guys turned the guys on turned up the heat for a change. Let's find out what is number three. Well, I I'm talk- not sure what what order this is in. Yes, you keep going. FHM Magazine was a competitor to Maxim Magazine. Do you remember Maxim Magazine? There yes. was this point in the early 2000s, the late 90s into the early 2000s, where basically like non-nude sexy magazines like basically Playboy that could be sold on a regular 
magazine rack. That became a thing for a while. Right, right. Definitely tied in to, in my mind, to like the the like the DreamWorks sex comedies out there and the Blink One Eighty Two, like something about like that generation of MTV in the early two thousands and the way that like suggestive sexiness was kind of like pushed out there in that very early 2000s way. And DreamWorks made sex comedies? Yeah, DreamWorks had like Road Trip. Like maybe really? they're not all DreamWorks, but some huh. of them like American Pie. Like these are R-rated things and these did have nudity, but like in a sort of post-American Pie world uh-huh. and all the sex comedies that came from that in the early 2000s, I feel like Maxim Magazine and FHM Magazine were like basically like part of that dude bro culture that's a gotcha. dude bro culture so they have like articles like why scotty doesn't know is the best song of the yeah, decade exactly so there was just this thing where like v- like everything up to the nudity men's magazines I that see. didn't have to be sold wrapped or on the top shelf or behind the counter that was a thing for a while during dude bro times of the early 2000s and how many uh fhm magazines do you own danny Zero, because I respect women. To me, I'm like, well, if there's women out there who are willing to be naked on camera, you got to go get those magazines. It's disrespectful to get the magazines where it's just suggestive. I love the Patreon energy we're bringing to yes, this demo it's song. Yes, really episode. is. Uh, yeah. Uh, is there anything else you have, William, related, Danny? Not really. Oh, okay. There's really, I mean, there's nothing. There's no covers. There's no fan videos. It's it's a deep cut song off of the demo. Like when we did Be I'm Rad years re-cut ago, I had to make our own. <laughs> I'm going to recut Keyless's milkshake to this song, the video. Hold on. Typing in <laughs> Rave DJ. <laughs> William Reliant K. Click that, and Keyless, not Ellis, Keyless Milkshake. Now, this may take a while to uh, to develop in Rave DJ, unless it's like instantaneous, which means someone else in the world did it. <laughs> if you type two things in on Rave DJ and the mashup is instantaneous, it means someone else already did it and it's already gotcha. on their survey. How... F- how bizarre would that be if someone already <laughs> that would be mind-boggling so we may have to sit here for a minute because our mashup is cued to be created so uh what do you want to talk about while we wait for this to load oh i don't know april came over to say hello hello oh, april baby. she says i'm excited for this i cannot wait to hear this mashup and it's ready ding here we go okay you excited <laughs> Yep. Are we ready for the... This is called Willy Ache. <laughs> like, the first with the first few letters of William, and then I Ake. love that it's, uh, like, Ake. superimposed over Yeah, the, I took a screen cap of amazing. the cover art, which is ho- kind of horrifying and That's hilarious. Great. So I mash it up with the video, so there's some video of her. Okay. Great. This is pretty great. (laughs) I mean, I'm dancing. This is amazing. And I'm actually watching the video we talked about now. Just putting like a fuzzy pop punk skate punk guitar underneath this song. So Jessica. Yes. (laughs) What do you think of the song William by Reliant K? Do you like it more, less, or the same? I like it more. You like it more? Well, I hadn't listened to it before, so... <laughs> There's only one way to go. There's only way to go, and that's up. <laughs> you can't even like it less, because you nope. never heard it before. So if you liked it at all, you like it more. Yeah. If you hate it, you can only like it the same. Now, this mashup? Oh, I love this mashup. 
way more than I thought I would. How about you, Dan? Do you like the song more or less or the same? I definitely like it more. I like Willy Ake even. This is the <laughs> yeah. I don't like Fall Out Boy more than before oh, we no. talked about this episode. I don't like the Black Eyed oh, Peas no. more, but I, I do like Keyless Kellis Air. What's her name? Whatever. And I like this song. So, I will see you later on Sadie Hawkins' pod. What? What? It's me, Matt Thiessen, and the Earthquakes. We, we, we got it, Dan. Okay. We got it. <laughs>